Hi guys, it's Marina from Tech Muse, and uh, today uh, we are going to learn how to implement push notifications in an Expo React Native application. We're going to do it from scratch and we're going to cover only Expo Go so that you know there is um, a difference between implementing push notifications in an Android emulator, which they don't work, or in Expo Go on a real device or if you're doing an internal distribution build, that's a bit uh, different tutorial, which I'm going to do it um, in the future, okay? Or today, if I'm in the mood. <laughs> so today we're going only to cover push, notification, push notifications in Expo React Native application uh, for Expo Go. Let's get started. Okay. So we start with our terminal. Let's open up Visual Studio Code. I hope you have the environment set up for using um, Expo and NP NPM. So let's open up the terminal and uh, we're going to CD into desktop. I'm just going to CD into the directory where I want to build my app. So it's called uh, apps folder. And here I'm going to create a new uh, Expo React native application by running this command npx create react no 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 sorry <laughs> create expo app and we will call it react native push notifications okay now we're gonna wait a few minutes okay our project is ready and we can open it up in Visual Studio Code oh I clicked something different sorry okay file open folder, desktop, apps, React Native push notifications. And here we are. This is our bare template of an Expo React Native application. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is um, we're, go we're gonna do all the codes in the app.js component. I just gonna, I'm just gonna clean it up a little. So we start from scratch. Uh, I don't think we need a status bar and we don't even need style sheet. Let's just return the text for now, which will say uh, Expo React Native Push Notifications. Okay, and I'm gonna remove also the styles. Uh, of course, here the style containers will not work. We're just going to do margin top of, I don't know, 100 and that's it. So uh, here we're going to have a button from React Native that will be called uh, Send Push Notification. And somewhere here we're going to have um, the function <clears throat> on press function, which is going to be called Send Notification. Okay, I'm going to create it real quickly now. Just console login something. Const send notification equal to an arrow function and we're gonna just console log uh, something okay then we're gonna go to our uh, chrome and we're gonna look for expo notifications so here we go we go to the expo documentation as you can see push notifications they don't work on emulators, on either of the emulators. So <clears throat> if you want to test it out, you have to use the real device, which is very easy. I'll show you later. Installation. So yeah, we have to install this Expo Notifications package. Let's copy that. And uh, I'm going to install it here. And while it's installing, I remember also that we have to have this Expo device package. Let's look for it. Expo device. Here we go. Um, we're going to install that as well. And I think that's it so far for the installations for Expo Go push notifications. So let's come back to the documentation and uh, see what we have here okay we have to copy a few lines like we're going to be we're going to be using a couple of hooks from react we don't need uh, use ref for now just gonna use your state and use effect okay 
And um, just so you understand the flow of how push notifications work is uh, first the device where you launch your application, it has to, to register for push notifications. So it has to allow push notifications and uh, give permission, right? Uh, and uh, wa once uh, the device gives permissions to send notifications, it will provide us with a push notification token. So here on use effect, which is an anonymous function that will be that will run on component load, we're going just to console log for now that we are registering for push notifications. Okay, for now it will not do anything. Then we're gonna have a state which will be called uh, expo push token. Actually, we can we can even copy it from here. You see, expo push token set expo push token. Okay, and now on use effect we have to register for push notifications. For this, uh, we can copy these two lines. Even let's copy all of this block of code. Okay, good. And then what we have here is we have a function uh, in the use effect register for push notifications as sync, and then we have access to the token. Well, this function is written here. Register for push notifications. I'm just going to copy all of it. Honestly, you don't have to change anything except project, uh, except for project ID. So I'm going to do. I'm going to insert this function somewhere here, and let's see. We have register for push notifications async, uh, which first declares the token variable and then does some checks on the platform type and the device. Blah 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 blah. You don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, the only thing we have here is the project ID. Where was it? I don't know. It's here. Okay. You see, it's written your project ID. So later we're going to replace that with a generated project ID from uh, EAS. I'll explain later. And now inside the use effect function here, we're going to call for the function that we just created. So we're going to say register and we can copy this as well. It's uh, right here. Register for push notifications to have access to the token. Okay. And uh, instead of just setting our expert push token to the token that we have, I'm going to console log it first. And then we're going to set it set our state to this token. Uh, and I'm going to also catch an error in case anything goes wrong. OK, I think we're almost ready for testing out our push notifications and uh, generating project ID. Let me just check. So, OK. Uh, if you launch this application right now, it's not going to be working because uh, we don't have a project ID. So what we have to do is you have to have an Expo developer account. Okay. Uh, I already have one. If you don't have one, you have to sign up to Expo and create one. So I'm going to create a new project and I will call it React Native Push Notifications. Create. And uh, as you can see here, in some, we already have a project, an existing project. We just have to run this command. If you don't have EAS installed globally on your machine, you have to run this command first. I'm going to just run EAS init with a, a generated project ID. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal and I'm going to run this command. And it's going to be, okay, project successfully linked. So, uh, how do we launch our app? Uh, we can do npx expo start with a go command. So we start in expo go. And now I'm going to open my camera and scan this QR code. And you have to have a. And you're gonna have to have the expo go installed on your iPhone. 
So you see, now we are opening up a project. I think I'm gonna do like this so you can see both screens. Yay, it's building. So here we go. This is our, our expo app. Uh, let me just quickly do a bit of styling so it's at least centered. Okay, where are we? Margin top, okay, and um, align content, align content, center, no, align items, what's the fucking difference? Oh, sorry, yeah, okay, and I'm gonna just do a bit of margin here as well, <laughs> margin vertical, uh, let's say 30, okay, so now what we want to do is um, when we click on send push notification button we want to send a notification uh, in the console here you can see i'll move myself here uh, here in the console you see we have an error while fetching expo token it's because we have not inserted the project id where it should go so let's return to our project here i'm gonna copy this id and we are going to insert it instead of your project ID here. Okay, save. And now if we reload our app, we still have, okay, receives, this is our project ID, zero two. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I didn't copy it correctly. Okay, I get it now. Just missed one character and now you can see once you input your project ID correctly we are receiving a token exponent push token so I'm not gonna save it in any database for now what uh, we are doing here is uh, we are saving it to our local state and now we can use this expo push token to send a notification and basically when you send notification let's look at the documentation Okay, mm. send notification with Expo Push API. Uh, here they exp uh, explain a bit of architecture of how push notifications work. Uh, but what we need uh, to do essentially is just to do a API request with a POST method to this URL to send a notification and uh, provide some headers as well as um, a message itself, what we want to send as a push notification. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna copy this URL. Okay, now we can come back to our send notifications function and here, as written in the documentation, we have to uh, do an API call with a post method to this URI, URL. So we're gonna do this function as a sync. And here we're gonna do await fetch to this URL, okay? That's it for now. Uh, here we're gonna construct our notification message and we have to provide an object. So uh, we can declare an object called message with the, the following key value pairs. First, we have to do, uh, let's see, two, title and body. So we're gonna have two, and uh, here we, we are providing an expo push token that we have just been provided with when we regist registered for push notifications. Then we're gonna have a title of the notification, which will just be like my first push notification. Yay. And uh, we have to provide a bot body, which will be, I don't know, this is my first push notification made with expo rn app cool also you can provide sound sound default what am i doing sound equal to default somewhere here so your notifications have a default sound there is um, a way to customize it we're not gonna go into that now but there are a lot of ways you can customize your push notifications <laughs> using this api so
so we have constructed our message and now we can finish fetch method. Uh, as a second argument we have uh, an object where we have to provide a method that we are using which is post. Then we have to provide some headers and uh, the API documentation even tells us which headers sorry uh, which headers. So we can copy these ones and post them here. Of course, we need to customize a bit. For example, this will go into the um, quotes and this as well. And we have to have uh, commas everywhere. Uh, this is as well in the, in the quotes. Okay, and this too. So here we go. Now we don't have any errors. And the last key value pair which we have to provide in the second argument of the fetch function is the body itself. And the body is the message that we constructed here, but we cannot send it as a, a, an object that we created it. We have to actually stringify it. Uh, and that's it. Now, if I open, um, I open my app, Here, we can try out and send push notification. It's working. So here is my first push notification. But uh, you know what I think we need to change one thing here is that um, should play sound we set to true. Okay, and we'll try again. So send. And I received it again but there is no sound for some reason. Maybe because I'm in the call or something, or maybe because, no, this one actually, it's, it's okay like that. So let me try it out without sharing the screen, without being in the call, okay? Send, and you see, I received my notification. I don't know if you can see that, look and it plays with the sound. So yeah, it's working. Very cool, that's it for today guys. And in the next tutorial that I'm gonna be publishing soon, maybe in a week, because now I quit my job and uh, I actually have more time to focus on the content um, before my next job comes around. So I'm gonna be doing weekly tutorials and the next time we're going to configure the push notifications for an internal internal distribution build, which is a bit more difficult, but not really. You just need to understand a uh, few things. Thank you for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.